The Plattsburgh State University Art Museum has one of the largest collections of Kent's works. The museum owns 34 paintings by Rockwell Kent, as well as a large collection of prints, drawings, dinnerware, books, photographs, and items from his travels and life at Asgard Farm that are now on permanent display in the Rockwell Kent Gallery, which after being closed for two years for renovations on campus, the gallery has reopened and is open daily Monday through Sunday from 12 to 4. And we're joined now by Walter Early with the Plattsburgh State Art Museum. Welcome, it's nice to see you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Rockwell Kent traveled extensively around the world to South America, to Greenland, to Alaska, and other remote locations. And many of his paintings and drawings were inspired by those trips to the rugged wilderness. You followed in his footsteps this past spring. You went to Alaska to the area where he lived and where he painted. Where was that in Alaska? He lived in Resurrection Bay, which is near a small town called Seward. He lived on Fox Island that was in Resurrection Bay. It was a promotional thing. So Kent, Kent had a sponsor that wanted him to come and paint in Alaska. It was, at the time, Seward and Alaska in general was just starting out, just being kind of developed. And Seward's on the bay, it was a big shipping port and kind of one of the first stops to get to the rest of the territory at the time. And Kent was looking for, as you mentioned, he traveled around a lot and he was always in search of wilderness. He was in search of vast expanses and untouched or seemingly untouched land. Now, interestingly enough, you went almost 100 years exactly after he was there. Right. How is that area? Has much changed in, in, on Fox Island or in, in Seward? Fox Island is still pretty deserted. Um, there's, I think, footings. I didn't actually make it to the island when I was there, but I was talking with uh, residents of Seward who have been there. And I think the footings of the cabin, there's like a clearing that's still there, but it's fairly deserted. The town itself has um, a handful of buildings that would have existed when Kent lived there. There's a general store and a telegraph house and a hotel. And do people still know of Rockwell Kent? Do they know that he was there 100 years ago? Did he leave much of an impact on, on the community? I don't think the town of Seward everyday residents would. There, there is a small cluster of people that are Kent enthusiasts and, and know that there's a historical society that has you know, mentions of Kent in their collections. Now you mentioned uh, there was a Kent enthusiast who still lives in Seward. There's, he's a, an English teacher, I believe. Doug Capra is his name. Uh, longtime Seward resident and got into the history of Kent and he's been tracing Kent actually as, a, as this hundredth centennial He's been going back through and comparing Kent's diaries and his letters and subsequent books that Kent wrote reflecting on his time in Alaska, uh, compiling all this information and, and he's been doing almost a daily update to track 100 years later what Kent was doing. Oh, he has a blog now. That he he does, yeah. yeah. And so he knew a lot of the history of, of why, what drew Kent there and what, what he did there. Yeah. He, in recent years, wrote a foreword to one of uh, Kent's books that was uh, uh, published once again. Right, Wilderness, yeah. Rock, Rockwell Kent wrote this book, kind of compiled of drawings that he made while on Fox Island and his diaries and, and a few of his correspondence with his wife Kathleen and others and compiled this into the book Wilderness, which was published after, after an exhibition that he had of Alaska paintings, which really kind of sparked Kent's fame. When you were in Anchorage, you met with folks from the, uh, from the Anchorage Art Museum, and they have some of Kent's works in their collection. In fact, they have a couple on display right now. They do, yeah. They have uh, two Kent paintings at the Anchorage Museum at Rasmussen Center, and I met with Monica Shaw there. She kind of showed me around the collections and pulled a bunch of prints that they have. Uh, these two, there's a painting of, from, I think, from 1919 um, of, like, little cabin on Fox Island and a tree stump that's there and then they have another version of um, the Resurrection Bay painting that we have in the Plattsburgh collection of Resurrection Bay which has the view of the bay and some whales off on the right hand side and ours doesn't have um, any people in the foreground. The one that they have has a, a man and a little boat on the shore. That must have been a little surreal for you to say, whoa, our collection at the Rockwell Kent Gallery at SUNY Plattsburgh, we have one almost identical to that, yeah. but uh, enough differences that uh, 
That must have been fascinating. It was, and, and I think that was fairly common for Kent to revisit these themes in his paintings over time. When you were there, you mentioned that you also saw a painting that, uh, that Kent had done of, of Asgard Farm, mm -hmm. uh, part of their collection in Alaska, but probably wouldn't be put on display there because they're really a museum that focuses on on Alaska. On Alaskan things, right. Yeah, they, they have uh, Asgard in winter, uh, which has the barn with Asgard written on it and some children playing in the snow. can't remember if there's a snowman, but I want to say there's a snowman. Um, and had you ever seen that painting before? I had never seen that painting, which was, it's great. It's, ha it's hanging down in their basement storage and I'd love to get it here sometime. That piqued but your interest. You, you, that's something you might look into is whether you could, they could loan that to you and certainly. You could put it on display. Yeah, we, uh, at the museum we're always interested in fleshing out people's exposure to Kent and he was incredibly prolific. His artwork is all over and it's always it's always the thought that if we can get it back to Plattsburgh and let people see it in the place where it was maybe created, he traveled a bunch, but potentially some connection, especially since Asgard is so close to us. The gallery has reopened. It was uh, closed for what, almost two years because of renovations going on around right. campus. And so now as you reopen, have you added new pieces to the collection? We are, we're constantly, you know, looking to see what Kent items are available that would help us develop our collection. We have added one thing to the gallery, which is a settee from the Kent family home. Hmm. And there's been some, some research done to try and dig through photographs and see if we can find that in context. So for you folks at SUNY Plattsburgh, you have a pretty fascinating exhibit going on right now. Artists as Innovators, tell us a right. little bit about that. Artists as Innovators celebrates 30 years of the New York Foundation for the Arts fellowships. So this, this state funded body will give money to artists to help develop their work. And it's, it's great because it's artists at any level, well I think it's, they have to be at least 25 and a resident of New York. Yeah. But other than that, they can receive funding to develop their work. And so uh, the curators of this show put together a wonderful exhibition that's been touring SUNY campuses for the past two years and will go on, I think, for another year to a couple spots after us. These artists truly mean to uh, get in your face Yeah, with, the, with their works. Yeah, there, there's some controversial subject matters. There's uh, Andre Serrano, which was involved in the culture wars of the 80s as to like what should government funding for arts support. He has two photographs in there. We have, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderfully diverse exhibition, a wide range of media that we don't typically show. And it's been there for the summer and it remains there in, through August 9th. So right. folks still have a couple of weeks to, to get over there and, and check it out. Right. Uh, the SUNY Art Museum right on the Plattsburgh State Campus. Walter Early, thanks a lot for taking the time to be with us. We appreciate it. You're welcome, Tom.